Welcome back to Design Connect 21. Our next speaker is Jason Wells, Brand and Marketing Manager for PG Bison. And his topic will be Pimp Your Kitchen, a change in attitude towards your choices of materials, colors, textures in your kitchen. And it will be in association with the KSA. Over to you, Jason. Ah, oh, super. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for, for joining me here today. And thank you to the Decorex, um, to Decorex for, for giving us this platform where we can meet and chat. Of course, what I'd like to do is also, and I'm going to just throw up my presentation right now so we can quickly chat through some of that. Um, so I'm going to quickly share my screen here, share the entire screen, and that'll make it easier. Uh, let's start at there. All right. So like I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time to, to join us today, to come and listen to us, uh, listen to what we have to say. And thank you to Decorex for, for providing us with this platform. Of course, I'd like to say thank you to the KSA for inviting me to come and talk on their behalf as well as on behalf of PG Bison. Uh, PG Bison's had a long-standing history with the KSA. We've been members um, for over 20 years now, supporting them in any which way we can. And we're really proud of what they do for the industry. And for those of you who are not so sure about what the KSA does, a quick intro. The KSA is an industry body, and it seeks to improve the kitchen manufacturers and associated suppliers like PG Bison by promoting professional, reputable, and accountable behavior. Of course, this is for the benefit and of the consumer, giving them peace of mind. If you want more details about the KSA, you can visit them at www.ksa.co.za. And we have Stephanie Forbes, the national manager of the KSA, waiting in the virtual wings of our stage, who will be here. And if anyone has a question for the KSA, she can jump online and, and assist you with that. Just one thing to remember about the KSA is, of course, that they can only offer assistance if you have chosen to work with a KSA registered member, that's the, the, the one provisor with the KSA. So today, the topic is Pimp My Kitchen. As you know, my name is Jason Wells. Um, so basically what I do, together with my team, we look after the brand and marketing and some demand creation activities at PG Bison. But one of my roles specifically is to manage the range of colors and designs and surface finishes that, finishes that we offer to the market and keep those on trend, making sure that, that we, we're in step with what's happening in the rest of the world. We're finding out all those new trends out there and bringing them back here, localizing them and making them accessible to the South African market. So to do that, what I want to quickly chat about, of course, is trends. Not so much trends as in the fashions and the designs that we're looking at, but first talk about the sort of social behaviors, human behaviors, because these drive design solutions, and those design solutions are where the colors and textures will come to bear. So we have to understand what are people up to these days, what is, what's everybody feeling, because that, of course, will influence what are the colors and, and, and textures that they're looking for. So I'm going to quickly go over some high-level trends. It's not, not a, a deep dive. This is really just a, a, a sense of what we're already seeing as, as coming out, of course, after 540 days and some of lockdown, what's, what are people feeling and what have people been doing? The first trend, of course, space and time, and the redefining of space and time. We all know work zones are no longer bounded by space or time. You know, we, we answering emails at 10 o'clock at night, uh, everybody shifted into that work from home, um, there's been a little bit of a, a move back, people starting to get into a hybrid model. So we've got some people working some days on, some days off, some people still at home fully, uh, all of this sort of stuff happening. So of course, this is changing the way we use our spaces, our kitchens, our homes, of course, all of that. Now they, they have to be these, these hybrid workspaces. Social distancing, what does that mean for us in the future? Is it going to be there long term? And we were in a space where we were creating all these open plan areas. And now, of course, there's building up of transparent walls and, and sort of repartitioning things. So that's the, the one thing, the space and time. And of course, that sends into the, the, the second trend, the converging of zones. 
I think we all have that feeling where suddenly your kitchen table became your, your office desk. Not a lot of people can afford us a, a room that is a, a whole study, a private space for them. So there's a lot of sharing of spaces happening, be it the dining room table or the, the kitchen. Children still need to have lunch and do homework and you need to have a meeting. So, so all of those sort of things happening in, in these zones. So we, we see a, a trend towards these multi-use spaces and of course adaptability how can you easily transform from from one requirement to another and i think we're going to see a lot more hybridization of these spaces as as we move forward of course the other thing that that's to think about is repurposing of other spaces uh, lots of open office spaces what's going to happen there how are people going to use that and of course what are we going to do with our own kitchens or you know or, or or other living spaces how do we divide those up and make them more adaptable to our requirements. Digitality, uh, a life online. You know, two, three years ago, you're probably moaning at your kids for having too much screen time. And now suddenly I think we all feel like we're having too much screen time. You, you drift in and out of Zoom and team meetings. We, we spend our lives online meeting and all that. So what's that doing to us? How's that uh, influencing our, our social interactions? And how do we make that more part of, of everyday life? That leads into well-being. There's been a, a, a big drive in terms of, of you know, people feeling a little bit of cabin fever, cooped up, wanting to get more balance in their lives. You know, you spend your, you feel like you're spending so much time behind a screen. So people are looking for for ways to to bring balance back into their lives, mindfulness. That also lends itself towards more natural materials, natural colors, organic. Just trying to create that sense of calm and 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 serenity. Nesting. Nesting is one of the biggest trends that, that we've seen in the last 540 days. Actually, a little bit shorter than that. We went into lockdown, as, as, as PG Bison and many other co companies did, not knowing where is everything going to, to go to. Um, but as soon as the, the market started to open up in about June and July of, of last year, there was a massive surge in demand for product. Suddenly, I think everybody being cooped up, seeing their kitchens, <laughs> Knowing that this is the space that they have to be in for, for a long time, there, there's been a massive trend towards redoing, as a renewing, renovating, replacing a lot of stuff being spent on, on homes, be it because you had more expendable income, not, not traveling, not spending it on other things. But we have definitely, over the last few months, seen a massive surge in terms of people fixing up their homes and, and that whole sense of nesting. And of course, thinking local, um, this is an international trend. Everybody, you know, uh, as, as the borders closed up and, and, and imports slowed down, people started to explore what, what was available locally. And I think that's also what's led to a lot of the demand in, in PG Bison, um, just people looking for local options. Um, and there's a, a lot more drive towards being a conscientious consumer. So another trend that we're seeing. So those are the, the main trends. They, they are evolving as, as we go along. But what we are seeing as, as, as influencing and the, the sort of behaviors and what will come in terms of requirements for materials and colors in the future. In terms of materials themselves, the trends that we've been seeing, fashion, color, texture. This is not your great grandmother's uh, panel art green dinette kitchen table. It's definitely a huge move. Uh, the, the, the speed at which colors are, are, are being introduced, new textures are being introduced, is really just on, on, on the up and up. Um, years back, you know, colors would, would sit in the range for, for, for years. We'd launch them and they'd just sit there. And these days, we're looking at a two-year cycle of actually launching new colors and new textures. So really, the, that, that whole speed in material, um, sort of the acceptance of, of that has, has gained momentum dramatically. And I think people are expecting it. They, they're looking for new stuff. Durability, low maintenance. Again, being at home, you know, sort of having to use your, your kitchen space, your living room space, or your dining room as, as, as an office too. People are looking for durability. They want low maintenance. Um, they want to know that the, the, the products that they put in will last. That's, uh, that's one of the things. Too. Healthy surfaces. Um, hygienic, easy to clean, easy to wipe down. Also, with the, the, the sort of pandemic in mind, a lot of people asking what, what can they do in terms of healthy services um, and what we've done in terms of, of additives to the, to the products to just improve their hygiene factor. 
local, sustainable, responsible. A trend internationally, uh, as I said, people looking for, for local options. The sustainable and responsible is gaining momentum in South Africa. It's, it's not at the same sort of level where it is in, in Europe, but certainly people are, are becoming uh, more au fait with the topic and asking questions about where the material is sourced from, or what are we doing in terms of plantations and, and trees and renewability. So definitely a, a trend has been growing there. And affordability, it goes without saying, people are looking for, for affordable options, you know, um, a lot of people under financial stress and, and, and so you want to upgrade, you want to, to improve your house and, and do all the, those things to your kitchens and, and, and sort of work on that, but it has to be at an acceptable and affordable level. And accessibility, for PG, this, is, this has been um, something we've been focusing hard on. There is a, we all know, a growing middle income and with a massively aspirational uh, flair. They are looking, uh, people are looking for, for for, for that fashion, that, that the, the, the sort of latest and greatest, but it needs to be accessible. So we need to look at materials that can get you that look, but at an affordable rate. So those are the trends really in materials. Again, broad brushstrokes, not, not too much um, fine detail there. So what's pumping? The first thing that I'd have to say in terms of what we've seen growing in demand is mat. Matt is definitely a huge trend for us. It, it, it's picking up. Um, we're seeing more and more requirement for this. Um, it has been around um, for the last two or three years, an international trend, and, and we're seeing that too here. The great thing about Matt, it gives you a very sophisticated and elegant look. I'm going to skip onto the slides now and show you some images. Because it diffuses light, it, it sort of subdues colors. And this image here, um, sort of beautiful example, you have a, an, an anthracite color, which can be quite um, uh, sort of an intense color, but with the matte surface, you actually get an, an easier application. It, it makes it a lot more accessible. Almost zero reflection on the stuff, uh, ultra, ultra matte. So this is the trend that we're, we're definitely seeing. A lot of people looking for a, a sort of um, the, the, this non-reflective matte. Another example, just again, talking about the, the intensity of color, that is actually um, the most part, most of those cupboard doors and, and frontals are a black, but you can see how the, the matte finish has subdued that and made it much more or less intense, let's say. If that was entirely done in a, in a gloss black, it would have been quite a strong presence, but now we have a, a, a much more subdued version of, of the kitchen. And again, just a little bit more of that, where they've mixed up the, the, the two, they've used a gray and, and a black to, to create this, this look. Another trend in, uh, in pumping kitchens is, of course, two-toning and three-toning and even four-toning. For a, a while, the two-toning was really just used as an accent, maybe a, a, a row of draw frontals, um, you know, sort of a little feature somewhere, somewhere in, the, in the kitchen. But we've seen a splurge in terms of, of two-toning. A lot of, of color combined with wood grains are coming through. Of course, it gives you the best of both worlds. Um, if you're not sure what choice to make, be it a wood grain or be it a color, you combine the two and, and you get the best of that. It makes it more visually interesting as opposed to approaching a kitchen that's just all done in, in one color. You can use it to create accents and features. And of course, just like the, the, the matte does, it helps to manage intensity. You can, you can pick a really intense color, but then just bring a little bit of subtlety to the application by combining it with something else. And of course, then adding on top of that, the surface finishes, be it a gloss or a matte or a texture, it just takes the whole application to another level. So really a, a, a sort of a trend we're seeing a lot more of, a lot more in terms of, of the use of, of, of colors, um, combining with, with different um, sort of designs and prints in, in the kitchen applications. Some examples you've, you've got here, the, the sort of, again, a very intense anthracite color being used with a, a wood grain in a more sort of balanced, a one-to-one one one kind of a ratio. Here, a little bit of, of mixing and matching. You, you've got the, the, the alternating sort of pattern going on. And here where it's been split, the lower level is done in, in the gray and the upper level is, is done in a wood grain. So it, it gets used in a variety of ways. But that really is one of the things we're seeing a lot more of. It's, it's, 
it's definitely taken a whole step up in terms of, of two-toning applications. What I love about two-toning, this is one of my personal favorites, is the way you can play around with color, and, and, and this is what makes it exciting for me, is you're not limited to, to certain options. It's just really about having an eye for it and, and just seeing what works. So for instance, here we have a petrol blue and a Calais, side by side, a whitewash and, and this, this sort of petrol blue color. And if you look at it, you'll, you'll notice that in the wood grain, your eye picks up on that darker gray patch in the middle and links that to, to the blue on, on the right-hand side. Now, if I swap that around and put it into a more beige color, your eye becomes aware of the tan colors inside of the wood grain. And that is a, a Calais and a Biscra. But again, I love that. That's, that it gives you that versatility. You can mix and match colors, really sort of play around and bring out elements within the, the, the design. So you can sort of really highlight certain colors that, that normally your eye wouldn't pick up, but just by combining it with the right um, unicolor or solid color, your eye is able to, to then focus in on, on some more features within that print. And as I said, this makes it much more visually interesting. It gives you a, an ability to, to balance the application um, and, and really play around a lot more than you would if you just go with one color or one print. Another pumping thing that we're seeing all over in, in kitchens and, and sort of wardrobes, um, all, all sorts of applications around the house, color carcassing. Color carcassing, we, there is a lot of white out there. A lot of people still want to use white and, and, and that's it, but definitely a lot more demand in, in colored and printed carcassing coming through. Of course, it's a step up from just a white carcass and it gives you a much more integrated, um, put together look. You know, it, it feels like um, if, your, if your frontals are just the, uh, the, the, the one garment, your, your shirt or pants, having colored carcassing is almost putting together the whole outfit. It really feels a lot more complete in its look. It just gives you a, a, a much more refined um, sort of upmarket uh, appearance. So whether it be a solid color like, like this, this anthracite gray, inside for a, for a wood grain uh, as an internal. And here, even in wardrobe units, mixing and matching. Again, the two-toning is not just uh, sort of for the outside of, of the cupboards, but also on the inside, mixing the, the verticals and horizontals with, with solid colors and with printed designs. So that is colored coxing. The other thing on our list of, of, of pimping is of course authentic textures. Um, this, is, this has been around for, for a little bit, but it's, it's, it's so important right now. Um, and I'll talk about the, the, the alternate designs and how those work with the textures and more color. Definitely just in the last few months, we, we've seen it, a, a, a bigger trend towards using a lot more color, um, whereas wood grains were always more popular. We, we are seeing the, the, the solid colors being used with those wood grains a lot more. So I'm talking about authentic textures. Printing, you know, has improved a lot in terms of, of, of the products we use, um, much more realistic. So those textures really need to enhance, enhance the designs that, that, that we've got out there. So gloss, although I said uh, matte is definitely sort of the latest in trends that we're seeing, our, the, the gloss out there is still ever popular. A lot of people wanting gloss. It, it gives you a sense of opulence, of, of, of you know, richness to a room. And also really practical in terms of small spaces, gloss acts like a mirror, so it bounces light around and it creates a little bit more volume in that space. So that, that's where it's, it's really good. If you've got a tiny little kitchen, gloss really works to just give you a, a, a bit more sense of space in there. Textures, um, a lot more rougher. You, people want to feel that, 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 that texture and, and sort of, it also lends itself to that natural feeling. You know, if we're talking about nature and organic, just to make sure that the texture sort of mimics that, that, uh, that look quite quite closely. Features, uh, you know, again, a lot of people using sort of feature walls, feature spaces, so you can do a, um, let's say a more cautious approach to the kitchen and then take a space and actually, you know, create a large feature that is then easier to change than, than doing the whole, whole kitchen in something bespoke. So definitely a lot, lot more sort of focus on using alternate designs, patterns, um, be it stones, be it concretes, um, oxidized metals, more and more of that coming into, into the, the sort of the fray. Like I said at the beginning, more color. We are seeing color being combined a lot more in different applications. Here is a, is a sort of duck shell green combined with the wood grain, 
but definitely a lot more color coming in as opposed to just using whites um, that we are, we, are, we are really seeing a lot of. Less of a pump, more of a must have um, hygienic surfaces. It's, uh, it's definitely been a, a topic lately. People living at, well, working from home, sort of being in those spaces, a lot of, a lot of activity in those spaces. People are looking for durable, easy to clean, a hygienic, you know, low maintenance, just wipe it down and go. And that's what, uh, um, you know, it's definitely a trend in terms of, of the, the surfaces that we're looking at is where people are looking for, for, for that, that sort of durability and, and cleanliness. So in shifting paradigms, what we just wanted to, to talk about, and I'm going to pop these all up at the same time. We spoke about fashion, color, and texture. We, we, I've just been talking about that now, what, where, where the trends are going, the durability, low maintenance, healthy surfaces, uh, local, sustainable, responsible, and affordability. So this is what, what we have to really sort of wrap our heads around, is that all of that is available and at an affordable price locally from South Africans. Um, everything I showed you in those pictures, that has all been produced using melamine faced boards. Uh, here, for instance, you know, this would normally have been a sprayed product with a veneer and definitely added a lot more to the cost. Now, suddenly, you can get that, that same look, that, that affordability is there because it is all there available in melamine faced products um, with the surface technologies that we've invested in. So in terms of, of textures, in terms of the mats, in terms of the gloss, everything is really available. This is the, 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 the great thing about this. And we, we talk about the, the sort of sustainable and responsible. Again, looking for, for a local option, there's no reason to have to import anything like that. It's all being manufactured right here in South Africa. And of course, at an affordable rate. That's the, the main thing. We, we as PG, it's one of the things we're, we're looking at is we want to be sure that we are actually getting to the right market, that you know, it's not inaccessible for, for, for people. Because as I said, there is a hugely aspirational market looking for, for design, looking for, for, for new stuff, and we should be able to supply it to them. And that really is all I wanted to chat to you about. If you want more in terms of inspiration and what we've been doing and the products that we've actually got available, because I, I can't pump too much here, this is on behalf of the KSA, but you can definitely get over to PG Bison and have a look at the ranges that we have on offer. And of course, you can get to the KSA website and have a look at all the, the members galleries. They are there. The registered people who work for the K or, or registered with the KSA are there and you can have a look at their work. It goes without saying, and I just want to wrap up with, go back to this picture one more time, that with what the KSA is trying, KSA is trying to do and, and, and us. Sometimes people have a, a, a hesitation, a hesitancy, um, an apprehension to using melamine face products and laminate worktops and things like that. But it really does come down to good workmanship and good installations. The products themselves are durable. They will, main, be, they will sort of maintain for, for many years. But as long as they are aged properly, they're installed properly, they are sealed properly, that is the biggest requirement. You know, you have to make sure that, that whoever you're using to do the job does a, a, an excellent job in terms of that fabrication. And that's how you make sure that the product's lost. Because from a, from a surface performance point of view, melamines and, 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 and laminates have been around for, for years. They, they're definitely, there have been massive improvements in terms of, of, of what we do with, with the surfaces and how they last. And added to that, you've, you've got, as I said, a range of, of designs that have come out that are a lot more realistic. This isn't the sort of plastic looking melamines of, of the 1980s and a little early 1990s, the textures just helping to, to create that sense of realism. And again, sort of responsible. We're not, we're not cutting down exotic veneers or, or anything like that. This is all just printed designs that we can then use, mix and match and play around with color and, and get fantastic results. So that's that. That is my uh, little talk for the moment. I'm going to ask if anybody wants to ask any questions. I'm going to escape out of the presentation so I can I couldn't see anybody for a bit. Here I am again. Jason, that was wonderful. Very inspiring um, and good to know. Thanks for all the tips. We do have some questions. Super. Let's just pull them up. Cool. 
Okay, the first one is, what are some of the, some of the more timeless kitchen looks? More timeless, I, I'd say definitely at the moment, your, your sort of, um, uh, how can we, uh, I don't want to say too modern, but but your your lighter colours, your 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 whites and and, and lighter greys, they're there. The 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 carazes and the the calipanas, I think they they are they're definitely trending right now. Um, they have a classic look to them, but we'll, we'll see. But I, I think the the sort of lighter colours are, and we do see that a lot with with the designs, the the, the prints. It tends to be the 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 lighter wood grains that that have more longevity. The dark ones come and go in in, in a seasonal pattern. Absolutely, and white's always a, a, a classic and always um, a safe choice hey, to go with like a glossy white or a matte white. It is, it is. But I think that the, the opportunity lies in that these days, you know, you, you can sort of, you can do a lot, lot more, um, sort of, yeah, you can take the, the white, but you can quickly change frontals out and change a new, you know, create a new accent point, you know, incorporate Absolutely. color, but be able to, to sort of not do the entire thing, but sort of, you know, be able to swap those doors out in, in a little while. Because very often, you know, the carcasses are, are serviceable and, and, and stay in good condition for a long time. But to just give the, a little bit of a facelift to the kitchen is, is quite an easy makeover. Okay, next question is, is the petrol blue cabinets a fad or do you think it could be timeless? The blue one. Look, <laughs> the, I, 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 the, the color petrol blue. The, the, at the moment, it's it's going to be around for for a couple of years for sure. This is not sort of a this month and then next month we're we're out of petrol blue. We we have a, a diverse demographic. Uh, a lot of colours work in, in in it's it's quite interesting. Over the the the, the whole country, there are, are are areas that that have a, a preference in in one colour or another. So we've definitely seen, as I said, this this trend towards the blues and and the duck shell greens. Um, that that's been been on sort of. Uh, on the menu for 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 two years now that move towards those colors um and a lot more of it uh, gaining i think we as as a nation there, there is there is a a sort of certain part that 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 requires a, a demonstration of of you know not opulence but 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 we certainly are, we show off a little bit more than germany for instance germany likes to Play everything down a little bit and, and, and subdue things. So, so we tend to like bolder colors. We like bolder wood grains and prints and things like that. So, the, the petrol blue, we've seen a lot of growth in it. And surface textures like the matte have just really taken the popularity of that to another level. Again, because it's it's it de-intensifies that. It tones it down. So it's it's not that in 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 gloss. It's bold and and punchy and it's it's beautiful. But the, that that use in, in in the mat now is definitely helping people to to use it a lot more sort of widely. So I, I'd see the color sticking around for for a good few years still. Great. Okay. Next question: Who are your top local suppliers? We are the top local suppliers. Um, <laughs> I, 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 can we just get some more clarity on 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 uh, yeah. your sort of? Yes. Are we talking about who, who yeah. are the KSA's top local suppliers? Because then I'll have to hand that over to 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 Stephanie to handle. Yeah. Okay, let's see, Steph. Do you want to answer that one? Sure. The best way is actually to suggest okay. that you, <laughs> you look that you go and visit our website. Um, obviously, we have members that um, traverse all different types of kitchens and all different materials. Uh, depending on what you're looking for. But if you visit the website, www.ksa.co.za, and you go to the members page, you'll find the listing divided up there in between supplier members and kitchen members. Um, you'll be able to identify who's in your area and who's not. And if you'd like more clarity on who is specializing in a particular area or a particular product, you're welcome to contact any of the KSA offices in any of the regions, and we can help direct you to the correct person. Stunning. Thanks, Steph. Next question. In your opinion, Jason, what are the best colors and textures for a kitchen? My opinion, uh, there, there's, whew, they're all my babies because you know I get to select yes. them. So, yes. so um, I, I think that that there are certainly um, we are seeing right now at, at the moment. There's Brookhill. Um, it's a very, it, it's, it was in a couple of the pictures, it's a more natural looking oak color. It doesn't have too strong a um, cathedral and, and grain in it. It's just got a little bit of rustic 
patterning. You, uh, there was that little one the, with the duckshell green cabinet yeah. and the, the yeah. wood. Massively popular at the moment. It, it's 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 really just we're seeing a lot of Brook Hill everywhere we go. So so that sort of natural looking wood grain, I think, is is definitely more that more that where South Africa is. Um, the, the longer sort of um, the colours that, that 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 do tend to stick around. We've got uh, it does tend to be more um, let's call them oakish looking uh, looking wood grains. So, so so more of cathedrals. What we as South Africans interpret as being a wood look, that that would be it, because you get a whole variety, like the the darker wood grains and and so. But the the the, the more oakish grains and and the more rustic stuff is definitely where where we've been and and have are sort of moving. Um, so so that that would be the, the ones that there's colours like Esperanza oak, um, shale oak, you, Brook Hill. All of these sort of colours are, are things that that I'd use. The other colours that that will stick around for a while, we've got um, a variety of greys. There's there's a, a light grey called Folkestone. There's a, a medium grey called Dunblane, new to the range but exceptionally popular. There's the darker Storm grey, and then there's Calapana, which is your your anthracite um, carbon looking colour, and then of course goes into black. So the greys definitely have they have been around for years and look like they are going to be around. They are sort of the the, the larger volume of of what we do. Of course, white's always popular. It's, it, it is classic. It'll always stick around. Um, but we've got a, uh, some some earth tones. There, there's there's a Congo, which which works really well in terms of combining it with, with, with certain um, wood grains. So the, the definitely the the, the greys are are, are a, like a, a, a good bet. Um, white's a classic. Will will always be around. But the the oaks and and the the sort of the the more I don't want to say traditional wood grains, but but you're you're sort of more what, what we consider as, as looking wood. They 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 tend to to work, but that again, it's it it is like I said, it's changed a lot. You know, twenty years ago, you put in a, a sort of a maple looking kitchen, and that was good for for another twenty years. Whereas we're seeing this trend in designs sort of really pick up speed. So so what is popular? It, it it's it's moving, and of course we have social media to thank for that. We have the internet to thank for that. You know. In the past, we'd have to go to a fair, see what's new, bring that back home, and, and say, "Here it is," and launch it, and wait two or three years for it to gain traction. But now, Pinterest and Instagram, people are seeing things quite quickly, and and so immediately, people are saying, "Hey, I'm looking for a turquoise color. I'm looking for a maroon color. I'm looking for this because they've been inspired by something they've seen." So, so we are definitely seeing a lot more of that. Great. Okay, we've got a few more questions coming in. Uh, your best uh, backsplash for dark mats. What's a good contrast to for a I am I am I am going to give that over to the kitchen manufacturers to talk about um, because we are you know not much about product it's used as backsplashes so I'm not going to comment too much on the backsplashes. Um, I don't know if Stephanie wants to talk a little bit, but uh... hi, thanks, Jason. Yeah, um, if you're looking to combine a splashback with a dark matte cabinetry. Um, a lot of people are, are looking at, at contrast there. So you're finding splashbacks going into your, your surfacing material. So if you've used a scented surfacing in particular at the moment, which comes in a, a lot of different patterns, that combines quite nicely. It gives you a nice thin, sleek line. Um, obviously, uh, stone is still popular, your quartz surfacing. But if you're wanting to try and echo that matte look, you can still stick with a, an original granite project um, and they can actually hone a dark granite to make it a matte finish. And you could do that on your surfacing and up onto a splashback as well. Um, if you're looking to use a, a laminate product to do the splashback to stay similarly in matte, you have to just be careful about a grease absorption, et cetera, particularly around a hob. Um, you can still move to, to your glass products. They, they can give you a, a fairly... Um, similar color with but glass will always have a sheen to it so it will be mm. combining a, a more of a high gloss look with your your matte cupboards um again the the look of the bring in the the metallic looks has been very popular overseas um particularly in the uk where they are bringing in uh products that have a little bit of a, a bronze or a copper feel to them uh for splashbacks and accents as well i hope that answers absolutely Thank you, Stephanie. Okay, so one more question here. Most durable material for kitchen flooring. Is that one you can answer? I was going to say, I can answer it, but it's definitely not anything from PG. Not we, we, 
PG bias is mostly yeah, the surface is yes. material. So Steph, if you want to come back and just comment on the the most durable for kitchen flooring. That, that is a difficult one because they they are all uh, have issues if they're not treated correctly. Um, I think yeah, it's important to know that if you're going to use a, a wood flooring of any kind, that the the the, the issues there linked to water is must be borne into consideration. With tiles, it's important to remember if you're going to be buying tiles to buy extra. In a kitchen, it's very easy for you to drop a heavy pot and pan. You might have a cracked tile that you, you need to replace later down the line, and then you can't get stock. Um, there has been a move in some, some places to bring back the old linoleum flooring that's look, now looking to, to be something else. It doesn't look like it used to. Um, people have, have used that because of the durability and the easy, easiness to clean. Um, but I think whichever surface you, you look towards, it's important to do your research. They all have their vulnerabilities uh, when it comes to, to application and usage if you abuse them. Um, and a lot of people have also opted for the concrete flooring look where it actually gets the treatment. But that again, if you don't get it done by the right company, we've seen a lot of issues come up with, with that if it's not done correctly. Okay, the, the questions just keep coming. Steph, I don't know if you want to stay on. There's another yeah. one here. Um, what is the environmental impact of making your product, the glue, the composition, and the laminate surfaces? I think this is for you, Jason. It is, it is. Okay, so if you look at, at our product, um, let's take melamine-faced board. Um, the way it is, 90% of the board is, is wood, and that, that wood is grown locally. Um, it's a pine species or a eucalyptus. And those are all in sort of responsible and sustainably managed plantation because South Africa doesn't have natural forests that you could go and commercially use. So, so everything that we do, it is a crop. And often people kind of get a sense, they, 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 they see footage of maybe uh, natural forests being cut down and worry that that's what's happening. In South Africa, it's, it's really well maintained and, and managed. Um, it falls under the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Forestry, Environment. So they, they sort of... Um, uh, license those forests and, and that's what we use. We also use um, windbreak material, so, so where they've grown gums for, for on farms and things like that, we, we, we do use some of that uh, timber too. So that's where the timber comes from. That makes up 90% of, of the board product itself. The resin we use is a urea formaldehyde that is made from, uh, it's made in our petrative um, uh, Factory, and that is made to the SABS standard. So that that we we actually have to make, um, you know, according to to the, the standard there for the emissions. So that's the glue that's used. So um, in terms of the, the the decorative surface, the melamine from um, uh, paper, that is a paper that we we imported from Europe mostly. Um, and again, reason for us importing that paper is there are no local manufacturers of that grade of paper or printing of that paper. So that's that's where the product comes from. So in terms of, of the product, very sustainable, um, because also the, the, the Europeans, in terms of the paper production, are, um, are managed quite carefully in terms of FSC and, and, and all those sustainable. Perfect. Uh, one more question here. As well as the afterlife, how long does the laminate take to decompose? Okay. Well, the, the laminate, once it's been made, it... it it, uh, I couldn't give you an exact on, on a decomposition, but what we do do is, um, well, it can be done, is it gets broken up and, and um, sort of put out into, into, into compost, um, smashed up into pieces and, and, and taken away. I can't tell you exactly how long it's going to decompose, but eventually it'll all break apart. And our last question. One last one. Can any of the colors be a matte finish? like the storm gray and petrol blue even the rook hill, rook hill fusion okay so the way we did this uh, we launched matt at the beginning of, of last year as we went into lockdown um uh, and what we we've done with that is we've made a very limited range there are only 11 colors available right now in the matte range but that is because pg Boston is a manufacturer and we need to rely on stockists to take our product and then supply the market so we can't overload them with more and more colors because they need to manage their cash flow too so we have a limited range there are eight of those are so now it's nine are solid colors so the petrol blue the storm gray um congo dunblan gray all of those are available as that and then there are the two stones azana and matt oh sorry azana and caldera they're available 
we do have a way with customers, but where it's a specific order and we, we can produce things, but then there is a minimum order requirement um, and we, we actually manage that, but it's a very specific thing that, that we do um, for large contracts. But in terms of if somebody's looking for a Matt Woodgrain, I'd say stick around. Um, we are busy preparing for our next uh, launch of products. And, and that is one of the things that are on our radar in terms of looking at, at wood grains in Matt because it's, we've seen it in, in, in Europe and it, it's starting to, to pick up in, in popularity and we would like to do that now. But for now, as I said, the, the range is about 11 colors. You can see them on our website, um, but definitely the petrol blue and storm gray are available as matte. Those, um, some of the, the pictures I had, were they, there were some storm gray inside of them. Stunning. That's it for today. Thanks so much, Jason. Thank you, Stephanie, for joining us. We appreciate um, yeah, all the insights and educating us on the materials and finishes. And thanks to the association for coming on today. Um, our next talk will be at 1 p.m. So we'll see you back then.